This class is on how to baste a quilt. And to start with, you will need a back that's about eight inches bigger than the top, and your batting also needs to be about six to eight inches bigger than your top. And that's very important to have it larger. You will also need to starch your back, and I always starch my back two to three times. And as I sew the top, I also starch. Now, starching is really an important process for the quilting. It allows the quilt to lay flat, and it also helps the quilt to hold its biases. So you'll want to make sure you do that. You need to buy two boards, and they're trim boards, and you can get them at any hardware store. They're meant for, like, baseboards in the house. And they come cured, which means they're going to stay straight, and they come painted. They measure about three quarters of an inch to three inches. I'm not sure on the exact measurement, but they need to be basically that size. Don't get real freaky with the size. Just get whatever baseboard it is that has the square cut that has been painted. Of the boards, you want to get them at least a hand width or five inches bigger on either side. So a total of 10 inches bigger than your quilt back, not the top, the back. You want a good pair of scissors. I use a thimble and that's just for the basting process and for tying the loops off. And I also use milliner's needles. Actually, these are straw needles size eight and this is for basting or burying your knots. Our last item that we need to make sure you have is basting thread. I like to use Japanese basting thread and they use that for a lot of their tie dyeing techniques. This thread actually cuddles and holds your quilt together in a really tight manner. Now for us here in the States it's very hard to find this thread. So I have found that if you use DMC hand em embroidery thread, you know the kind that comes on the hanks that ha comes with six strands and you peel off two and do your cross stitch. You want to get a beige of that thread and you want to use two strands of that thread to do your basting. Now I have my back and my top and as you can see I have a hand width bigger on my back than the top and that's very important. A lot of people don't realize how important that is and they just kind of look at it like it's wasting fabric. The truth is, is that when you start to quilt, if you don't have that hand width, it's very hard to quilt in this area. So you want to make sure you have the hand width of the back. And I also like the batting to be at least, I don't know, two or three, I would say fingers, bigger than your top. So that when you're actually quilting that side, you can get right to that edge. You want to start with your top, and we want your top right side up and we want the back right side down. So basically we have the wrong sides together on this, uh, this setup here. And one thing that happens when you're doing a quilt that's really important to remember is that we want our back to be bigger than our top. So if you lay these out together, you're actually gonna see and make sure that that back is appropriate and flat and all of those things, and it's a really important thing. The back is actually what stabilizes the top, so if your back's not flat and stable and big enough, you're gonna have problems making that quilt square. So, and I have starched my back twice or three times, depending on how open grain my fabric is, and I've starched as I prepared this top, so we know that the top and the back are nice and stiff, so that the machine will handle the actual fabric better. We want to take our, our board and place it right on top, and we're going to wrap just the top alone around the board. And this gives you an opportunity to kind of clean up the back so that there won't be any threads inside the quilt. And I like to always have like the those masking tape lint rollers to help clean that up. So we want to roll our top on the board just like that. And as you're rolling, you want to keep the grains and the blocks all even. Now we've rolled the top and now we're going to roll the back. Now if you're working on a king size quilt, you want to put a couple of those, you know, those white tables that you get at, at Costco. You want to put a couple of those together and you want to get boards that are long enough for your quilt uh, with 10 inches or so bigger. Now we want to go ahead and do the same process on the back so everything is under control. I'm going to pull all of them together.
we have our quilt top on a board and we have our quilt back on a board. So we're ready to actually do the basting process. We take the entire unit and I flip it around. So if you're doing a really, really big quilt, that might be a little bit of cum cumbersome, but quilters are tough. They can handle that kind of thing. So we have our back and we want to open it up. And as we open it, the wrong side of the back will be up. Okay. So this would be the wrong side. And we open it up. And you don't want to open it any more than an arm length. You can't reach it. So if you open more, you're losing control. The weight of the boards are what that's what actually gives you the control for your quilt. We have our back placed on your table. We have the boards holding it. You don't need to use tape. You don't need to use clamps. You don't need to use anything. Just that board is more than enough. And if I'm doing a large quilt, I actually will use an office chair that has wheels so I can just wheel back and forth doing the, the basting process. So we want to place our batting right on top. And we take our top and we set it in just a little bit so we have control of the quilt on the outside edge. And unroll that whole unit. And we now have the quilt. Now it's ready to do the basting process. We want to take our thread, and, and it's our basting thread, and I like to do a little cast on. And I'll kind of put it on a little bit of a dark so you can see. And I just whip it over like this and put the point in, and then I pull on the long tail. And that locks your thread so it won't come off the needle as you're stitching. And if the, the little cast on is too thick, you need just one size larger needle. All right, so we want to put the quilter's knot, or whatever kind of knot. It doesn't really make any difference. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to start over here, and we need to secure with what I call a herringbone stitch. So we have one stitch. And we come down and I want three fingers. The three fingers are, are, it's the key. Now it's not my fingers, it's not your neighbor's fingers, it's your fingers. Because when you're at the machine, you have that much control right there, that space. So this will lock it in. And so we continue to stitch. Now the, the zigzag or the herringbone stitch was used in the past for shoulder pads or collars. Things that needed to move yet come right back where they were originally basted. So this is exactly what you need for machine quilting. I do not use safety pins. Never, ever will I use safety pins. They just don't hold correctly. And you have to put so many in there. And also when you are doing the actual stitching, you have to un, you know, undo the safety pins and find a place to put them. And I find that it is, is really not a creative process at all. Where when you're working on this, you, before you do any quilting, you can just clip the threads, pull them out, and throw them in the trash. So it is much, much better. And I find also that the backs don't um, shift at all when you're doing this process. So when you get to the end of your thread, you just do a little back stitch, cut it off, and re-thread. One thing that's very, very important is that we secure these edges on the outside. So make sure that one of your stitches are right there on that edge. If you don't secure it, they will actually do kind of a fluttery thing out there. And it's really important to have it secure. And I never, ever stitch any more than just that arm length. You lose control of your quilt if you have it free any more than just this. So that's a very important thing. I'll find in class that my students will think, oh, I'll just undo a bunch and then I'll, I'll be more efficient. And the truth is, is that the boards are holding the quilt. And if you have any more than this length, you will get tucks and puckers in the loose areas. So you want to make sure that you only have that arm length. We basted the first half of our little quilt and it is totally secure. So if you're working on a large quilt, you will go all the distance down the quilt. 
And at this point, we want to pull everything forward, just like this. And it will just sit in your lap or on the floor, whatever that may be. And you want to unfold the back and make sure that there's no little folds right in this area. And usually there aren't. I've never really had a time that it was. And you unfold the back. Now I always like to stabilize with just leaving the board there until I'm completely done. So the board is holding the back. And then we undo the top. And then place the board on top. Now the weight of the board is holding your back. So it's not going to move. We have it absolutely flat and nice. Now we have an area here that may have, this may happen in your quilts where the batting isn't quite as big as the back. Don't worry about it. As long as you have the back there and everything's secure, you can use the back to actually hold on to as you're quilting this edge. Just make sure that it is bigger than the top. And then you want to finish up the basting on this part of the quilt. Okay, we finished all of the basting and I wanted to make sure that it was really clear how to handle the basting when you're doing the stitching. When you start your quilting process, you will not stitch over the basting thread. You actually will quilt, but you'll pull out the basting thread in the area that you're going to quilt. Whenever I am at a show, there's always people that come over and try to talk to me. And this one lady came up to me and she says, I really love your basting technique, but it was really hard to pull all those threads out after I finished quilting. And I always tell people to pull it out before, but they don't usually hear that. And I wanted to make sure that I brought that really to focus, that the, the basting thread is pulled out before you actually quilt a certain area. Right, this quilt now is basted and you can actually manipulate this quilt in any way that you want. You can fold it up and just store it, whatever it is for you. So it's not limited to um, having to quilt it right away. Many times when you do the safety pin thing, you want to quilt it right away. You don't have to do that. You can also quilt in any area that you want to quilt in. You're, you don't have to quilt from the center out. It's not necessary. You can quilt in any area whatsoever. Mm -hmm.